buddy Zeke back and with NXT just ending I figured I'd go ahead and give my impressions of the new guys since this is really the first show that I've been able to catch pretty much all of it without having to miss anything and really I think I've gotten enough of most of their personalities to kind of get a, a small little opinion um, of the of the eight guys that are on the roster um, there are a few that just immediately stand out um, not all of them do, but there are a few. I'll start off with the pros. I'm kind of excited to see most of them there because I really think that they could each bring a, a unique aspect to the show that you might not have seen in the last one. The only thing I'm really concerned about is the fact that they have Lay Cool as one of them, which... I can see where they might have some interesting angles to go with that, but it it just doesn't really make sense to have them not be able to do tag teams or anything like that. It it just doesn't really seem like a whole lot, and they didn't really give an explanation for why they chose Lay Cool. I mean, I guess they're champions, yeah, but they're doing some interesting things with Caval, but I just don't like it. Um... The only other one that I would say I initially had reservations about was Cody Rhodes because he never really impressed me uh, as, as a singles competitor. He was always in tag teams and he was always really outshined by his partner. Um, when he was with Hardcore Holly, you really didn't care what happened to him. And it was obvious that Ted DiBiase was like the star of Legacy or Priceless, whatever iteration it was so I was it was interesting to see that they were putting him in there and he's really grown into the role I think he's really done a good job so that's always good now for the rookies I'm just gonna go down the list um, actually no I won't go down the list I'm gonna start off with the two that I'm most excited about which is Joe Henning aka Michael McGillicuddy and Caval who most of you or some of you will at least know as either Loki or Senshi from his time in both Ring of Honor and TNA. Uh, they're the two I'm most excited about because I've actually seen their work before. I know most of the other guys have been through FCW, Florida Championship Wrestling, if you don't know. And it's... And I, I don't really watch it. I mean, I, it doesn't come in my area, but I don't you know go online and try to find it. It... Yeah, Caval... I've always enjoyed. He had a great run in TNA several times, and I've seen a lot of his RH stuff, and it's really good. So he, he, I'm really impressed with him. So going into this, I go, he's a small guy, but maybe they'll give him a chance because they're push, pushing small guys. I, I think they're giving him the Brian Danielson treatment, where it's like, okay, we know you're going to be a star, but you have to earn your ropes because you got your name outside of the WWE, so you're going to lose. Maybe he won't spend the entire time losing, we can hope, but I hope they don't do it. But he's really impressive, so I really like him. Same with Joe Henning, of course, well, I guess I should get used to calling him Michael McGillicuddy. But I really liked his work in FCW, and in fact, he was the guy that took the belt off Sheamus when Sheamus, right before he got pushed up to the main roster. So that's always impressive to see that Sheamus is the world champion right now, and he's coming up as the guy that took the belt off of him back in the developmental territory. So that's always good. I I like him. He's really good in the ring, and of course the mere fact that he's related to Mr. Perfect, that's always a good thing. That means he might have some good genes in there, because Mr. Perfect was amazing. And Joe, actually, from the little that I've seen, well, not necessarily little. I've seen quite a few of his matches, but not as much as, say, uh, Caval's. But he, he's really good. He's really solid, and I like his finisher. It's a good little variation of a, a spinning net breaker, and it looks really smooth and like, like one of those moves that you can pop out of nowhere. So I like that. Moving on from the people that I don't know as much about, so I had to kind of get a feel for him. Uh, Alex Riley. Looks like they took the Miz and put him in a Letterman's jacket. He, he, out of all the other ones, other than Caval and Mike McGillicuddy, he looks like he has the most potential to go all the way. I, I'm kind of impressed by him. Yes, he's, he's 2-0 and so far, um, so that's always good. But he, he looks really impressive. 
and I like I like what he looks like he has to bring to the table because he's not huge. He's not one of the big guys. You know, he's still kind of sm on the smaller edge, like a Shawn Michaels. So I'm gonna have to see how he does in ring, but he looks like he shows a lot of promise. So um, and he looks like he's doing a pretty good job as like a cocky heel. You know, he's got that jock uh, personality going for him, which will easily make me hate him, which is good. He might brawl some good heel heat as opposed to like Otunga. So let's see how he goes, but I'm I'm uh, keeping my eye on him. Next is Eli Cottonwood. I don't know what I feel about him. He kind of looks like the guy that can't really move in the ring. When I watched him tonight, he basically just looked like the Great Khali. He looked like a white version of the Great Khali. Belligerent Bell was like, he has a similar bone structure, but really it was both the look and just his way in the ring. He just basically did a couple really big power moves while Caval ran, around, ran circles around him. Um, he did go down to the ground during the match, which means he can at least get back up. So that's always good. And I'll have to wait to see more in-ring ability for him, but I don't like him. I don't really... He looks like he's there just because he's big. Now, if he starts doing drop toe holds and and hip tosses and, and other th you know wrestling moves rather than just being a powerhouse, I might warm up to him. But right now, he just looks too goofy, and I just don't like him. So... He's on the lower end list. I wouldn't mind seeing him go next week. Husky Harris. I'm not sure what to feel about him. I don't think he's had a match yet. Or at least not one that stands out in my head. He did punk out Stryker like his pro did. So it looks like there might be doing something where, you know, they kind of team up and, and, and are the heels of the, the show. That would be interesting. Um, like a nice little rivalry with Riley to get the main heel heat so i'll have to wait to see him in the ring again but i don't like his look oh eli cottonwood i remember i said he looked like a a, a combination of the great collie and festus okay anyway um husky harris he just i don't like his look i mean he looks he's got a beer gut he looks like he has a beer gut he looks like he looks like a guy i went to high school with and that's never good um, but again, I'll have to, uh, maybe he'll wow me in the ring. I don't know. Percy Watson definitely <laughs> looks weird. Um, they did this whole thing where he lost because he couldn't see the Miz because his glasses popped off, which is really stupid. I mean, come on. I don't know. But he looks like he's got a lot of energy, a lot of charisma, which is never a bad thing. That's definitely a very good thing to have. He looks like he's athletic. He looks like he's out there having a good time. So I'm kind of warming up to him, despite the fact that he looks like a guy that I might have even picked on in high school, which I didn't pick on anybody, but if I would have, it would have been like, you, guy with the goofy glasses, uh, come here, I want to punch you in the face. I don't know. Um, he looked pretty good in the ring, other than the fact that he lost in a stupid way, and he looks like he has like a, a boom drop type of finisher, which is kind of cool. Uh, he got some really good elevation, so he looks like he's got the athleticness to boot, like Shelton Benjamin did, where he basically just did some really high elevation impact moves, and I like that. So I'll be on the lookout for him. And last but not least is Titus O'Neil, who looks like they basically kind of gave him a kind of gave him like the whole pit bull gimmick that Tarver was going for, but he uh, looks like he actually might be doing a good job with it. I can't tell if he's a face or a heel. I mean, when I first looked at him, I went, okay, he's heel, but then the way he was talking and everything, he's coming across more as a face. So I'm not sure exactly what direction they're going to go with him. But he hasn't impressed me much with his in-ring ability. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out for him. But this seems like a decent batch of NXT rookies this year. Uh, of course, the ones that I knew ahead of time have really stood out, and it'll be interesting seeing how interesting seeing how uh, Alex Riley plays into those two. Uh, those are the big three, I think, going into the finale that are going to be big. So we'll wait to see what happens next week, and hopefully this NXT season will be a lot better than last season without so much stuff with running around and doing competitions. We can only hope. Catch you later.